is why does Mordex have a cat skin, but a Suri does not have a dog skin? You're right. There's not enough balance. It's not perfectly balanced yet. Yeah, because like, what if you're a huge fan of dogs and you're not the biggest fan of cats, but you want to play a Suri? Like, you have that option if you want to play Mordex or if you're the other way around. I don't think that's fair. You're right. You're right. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure uh, somebody gets on top of that uh, eventually. Uh, meanwhile, Ghoul versus Tiger starting off in game number one. Uh, well, with that Scythe, like you were saying, he likes to play these Scythe characters. Uh, this time, going to be starting off with that Mordex, a very popular pick amongst the Scythe players out there. And that's going to give Ghoul a lot of options as to his secondary weapon that he's going to play against Tiger. Of course, he's very comfortable on the Scythe. The problem with that is if his Scythe isn't working, that's going to be pretty rough against Tiger. That means his matchup options are not going to be that great. He's going to have to rely on that secondary weapon that could be Gauntlets. It could be um, it could be an Asuri. It could be the Orb from Fate. It could be the Axe from Volkov. But if his Scythe doesn't work, that's the backbone of his character pool. Well, he did have a nice start. The fortunate thing about Scythe, nice, the active input on that down signature. That's one of the fortunate things about Scythe. But another fortunate thing about Scythe is with these kind of uh, string heavy weapons, these really read heavy weapons, they tend to level up throughout the game as long as you are staying focused and keeping track of the way that your opponent's uh, dodging out of things, keeping track of their habits. Uh, but of course, that can take a mental toll to be keeping that much focus on what your opponent is doing. Ghoul not necessarily tunnel visioning for that weapon. You saw him kind of dip away from it as he saw Tiger coming in. Ghoul's Scythe is looking wow. good. Kind of one of the best that we've ever seen anybody look against Tiger. Now, I could be wrong on this, but I don't think I am. Senpai Guy is like the only player who has ever taken a set off of Tiger in a PR counting game. Uh, that sounds about right. It is very rare for Tiger to lose a game, let alone to lose a set. Yeah. Ghoul going very wide on that Tiger, just kind of staying in between the wall and Ghoul. Getting back on the stage. Ghoul with the lead here. Tiger might be finding himself uh, in an area he's not familiar with. At the same time, Ghoul is fairly damaged. So could see Tiger easily even this one up if he finds the right KO move. The weapon toss not going to quite be it. Would need another one. Oh, goes for a big committal with that ground pound. It's a risky play, especially with how well Scythe does in the offstage. Ghoul making the smart choice of stealing that weapon spawn that was on the stage. Unfortunately, that one's going to come almost directly to Tiger. Nair's going to take off the top, and we're even in stocks, but Tiger's about 50 damage behind. It's definitely still doable for either player here in the Winner's Finals. Tiger trying to roll forward with these sidelights, and Ghoul with great positioning, but Tiger just immediately <laughs> dodges <gasps> down. That's a stock! That's a stock! Oh! And Ghoul just takes it. Very he just clean. takes it with the ground pound. Once Tiger's dodge came out, Ghoul was ready to go. He saw the opportunity. He saw the writing on the wall. And Ghoul is going to take game number one off of Tiger. Of course, again, it is Tiger that we're talking about. Somebody who very rarely loses. So we expect him to do infinitely better here in game number two. Have just kind of learned everything he did wrong. Wipe the board clean and go into game number two. Now, he did take off Small Brawl Haven. That was banned out. Of course, that was the stage that they just played on. But something that Ghoul can definitely have in his favor is a very strong signature kit coming out from the scythe. You know, we've seen uh, the magic that Sandstorm can work with it. And you saw what Ghoul was able to do last game. Kill potential in just kind of on the oh, stage snap. is something that scythe players might struggle with a little bit. They might have to rely on that edge guard game, which you saw Ghoul do that extremely well also. Yep, so that he is might not struggle things, with the onstage knockout options. It's one of the things that uh, Scythe tends to struggle with is, is finding those kind of KOs, right? It doesn't have the uh, luxury of like a downlight side air like a sword would have. But at the same time, uh, Mordex in particular does have that set up into the neutral light and signature. Not a true combo, but still a very effective stock ender for Mordex players. Weapon toss and Tiger actually backs up. He doesn't grab that weapon and go in for a side air. He backs up just to kind of reset. It's 
Still playing that unarmed game, wants to maintain some sort of pressure, and the side signature jumps over the downlight from Tiger. Mild health advantage to Tiger. He's going to try to keep this positioning, but again, Ghoul playing very smartly around it, utilizing these soft platforms to land back down the ground. Now, one thing that Tiger is doing, even though he did take the first stock, I think it's not necessarily the smartest choice to just kind of let Ghoul get to a weapon. As much as he did, I would focus more on stripping the field. Yeah, Tiger, uh, again, very confident in himself. I don't think he's too concerned with weapon denial. Um, we do see that from some players who really like a specific weapon, right? Like they're like, oh, I am a Lance player. I don't want to prime a second Lance and end up uh, messing myself up or anything like that. So instead, we'll see them kind of deny weapon or not deny weapons, but leave it as a trap. But Tiger, I think he's more of the type to just be like, I don't care if you have a weapon or not. Now, he does seem very confident in his unarmed, but we haven't necessarily seen the knockout option, which starts off with the D-Light. We haven't seen a lot of unarmed D-Lights, an incredible move, but we haven't seen a lot of that from his unarmed game. Oh, Look snap. at this. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous from Tiger. Downlight dare, gravity cancel, downlight side air from Tiger, able to hit the tip of that arrow shot for the neutral light and cool with the unarmed gravity cancel side. Heavy will finally finish off the first stock, but a huge lead for Tiger. And you just saw when he was focusing a little bit more on grabbing those weapons, he shuts down so many options that Ghoul can have. Lower damage buildup option, lower kill options out there. It's going to take a lot more. It took a just raw, unarmed side heavy all the way from the left side of the stage to knock out. This is a massive lead for Tiger now. A full stock advantage over Ghoul. And now he's playing that weapon denial. Just trapping Ghoul, making sure he can't pick up the weapon. He does finally pick up the gauntlets. But we really haven't seen a lot from Ghoul's gauntlets. He's putting out a little bit more unarmed damage just before that. He took him from white to yellow with weapons and a little bit of damage into that yellow stock. And then from like midway through yellow all the way to orange with the unarmed kit. Tiger is just a man alive here. Hitting the three piece side light down light into a neutral signature. But the stuttering from Ghoul actually kind of throwing off Tiger's momentum. Just keeping that rhythm changing on Tiger. Got him some good damage, but still Tiger... With the Tatami Matt will take game number two. Oh my gosh, huge damage difference between these two. 661 damage came out from Tiger compared to the 350 from Ghoul. Uh, it's, we haven't seen Ghoul lock in a character yet. There's a good chance he's going to swap. Uh, I would expect so considering how he wasn't really playing the gauntlets. It looks like uh, he's just no gonna swap. change up his mentality a little bit, take a little bit of yep. a breather, maybe some water but he really hasn't been using the gauntlets. He threw them away the last time that he had the gauntlets so that he could immediately swap to the side. Now, these two players do have a lot of history between them. Every single tournament that counts for PR that Ghoul has played in since Winter Championship 2019, he's lost to Tiger. He's, he's lost to Reaper twice, Tiger one, two, three, four, five different times he's lost sets to Tiger Three, in the past two. year. That's uh, that's a little bit painful, not gonna lie. But of course, I mean, statistically, that's not too much of a surprise just because Ghoul makes it to the end of tournaments. Guess who also makes it to the end of tournaments? <laughs> Tiger's one of those people. When you're regularly making top eight, top six, top three, you're gonna run into Tiger. Oh my gosh, Tiger just running wild all over Ghoul, putting arrows all up in that body of that Mordex, but we do see him. Starting to get some hits in onto Tiger. Not gonna make, uh, not gonna let Tiger go completely undamaged for the first stock. Oh, my oh man! <laughs> Tiger just Was that three side lights. Oh, oh. oh. the wall. That's gonna end up dropping. Messing that one up a little bit. Couldn't drag Ghoul into that neutral light, so Ghoul is able to uh, hold on a little bit and reset himself. But man, that edge guard from Tiger is that's one that's like frustrating to be in that position and you're like, I can't I can't get up because he just keeps hitting me with the sidelight. And with this Koji pick from Tiger, it's gonna have a very high amount of dexterity. That oh. means on whip, he's gonna be able to recover so fast. Koji, one of the highest dex characters in the game. 
Yeah, Ooh. I didn't quite catch Tiger's stance, but still, Ghoul able to get that first stock. Uh, with that high dexterity of Koji, he is going to be trading it out for having a relatively low defense character. And especially when he has that sword out, if he whips a move and, go, and Ghoul is anywhere near him, expect the neutral light. Always expect that neutral light. Yeah, that sword neutral light comes out incredibly quick, is great for covering a whiff move. Ghoul has brought this to an even game, starting to find a little bit momentum. Tiger's bow is starting to struggle a little bit against this cool scythe. One thing I'm seeing from Tiger is he's he's very reliant on the sideline as kind of the starter for his bow. And when he's not able to hit it, then you're seeing Ghoul kind of jumping over those sidelines and Tiger's not getting as much momentum, right? He hit a neutral line because of course Ghoul was staying in the air. He went for a neutral signature, wasn't able to connect and then whiffed a bunch of sidelines. You saw Tiger just try to dodge through, but Ghoul throughout that recovery had enough active frames to get through the dodge. But Tiger is going to clean up the edge guard, finishing it up with a weapon toss for the knockout. Only about 100 damage on this second stock from Tiger. I think he's feeling that Ghoul has kind of figured out how to play against his bow, at least for the moment, which is why he was leaning a little bit more towards that sword, but he threw it away trying to keep some pressure on Ghoul. Now he's kind of forced into this bow against him. Wow, what a delay on that recovery. <laughs> Great patience from Ghoul to just stay alongside Tiger. The second Tiger started to commit some commit to something is when he threw out that recovery. Ghoul now back over onto the scythe. It seems like the way to get away from Tiger's attacks is to jump in the air. So many of his options that do quite a bit of damage and have multiple hits in them start off of a grounded move. We don't see him hitting strings that start with like a down air or a side air or anything like that. Usually it starts with a down light or a side light. That being said, Bo does have that neutral line, which is very effective. Of course, it's not a huge string. Oh, that's a, that's a death. That's a stock. Ghoul takes another one up 2-1 over Tiger with the scythe plays that we were talking about. Even though about. he put out 100 damage less than Tiger did. Yeah. Damage doesn't matter when you get the stock. He was able to interrupt the recovery with the weapon toss, just stealing that game. And Ghoul's up 2-1 in the set. Ghoul one game away from knocking Tiger into the loser's bracket early, considering like we were saying in game number two, Tiger has lost one set Three, two, ever, one, and I'm 90% sure that was in grand finals. Um, I don't remember. I, I, I think you're right on that. Well, starting to bring out those gauntlets a little bit more. No, actually, I think it might have been winner's finals. Oh, really? Okay. Because I, th I think he came into grands from the loser's side. Oh, uh, I see. I, in my head, I was like, I know Tiger has played through a reset. And I wasn't sure if he was the one who got reset on. I guess he's the one who okay. did the reset in that scenario. Nice Ooh, down cool signature. starting off this game. Starting off really, really well. He was keeping that down signature back. We saw in game number one, he was throwing out quite a few of those. And then uh, game two, game three really reined it back. Now he's starting to bring it back out again. Oh, that's a stock. Ghoul starting to run away with this one. Takes a huge lead over Tiger. Ghoul is staying over so many of Tiger's attacks. Like, you see him jumping and fast-falling, jumping and fast-falling, staying, like, really low, but very rarely is he on the ground for very long whatsoever. It's usually to initiate an attack, and then he's in the air, down on the ground, in the air, down on the ground, and it seems like Tiger is having a ton of trouble dealing with that. I don't think he's used to playing against someone who is this floaty, especially with the soft platforms, you know, kind of an, a sort of place to land back down to. I don't think Tiger was ready for this type of playstyle. That neutral light's really not going to cover very high into the air. The down light's not going to cover very high into the air. The side light does have a, a strangely high hitbox. But 
He might have to go aerial himself if he wants to find a way to deal with, with what Ghoul's throwing out. I mean, Sword does have some decent air-to-air -air options. It does have kind of like dash jump neutral air, which is really good against someone who likes to float a lot. Or even dash jump recovery if they're low damage or low uh, health and about to be knocked out. But still, uh, Tiger's kind of relying on these grounded moves because he's so used to getting these really long extended strings that start on the ground. He's not quite as comfortable in the air. So much movement is coming out from Ghoul compared to Tiger. Like, I think Ghoul's keyboard is clicky clacking uh, significantly more than Tiger's is. The APM, a little bit less. Definitely throwing out fewer moves, kind of trying to pick and choose the situations he does so. Great positioning from Tiger, that micro spacing, that outspace, that side signature, that downlight into the side air for the knockout, but still. Uh, Tiger, he's, he's fairly damaged. This is doable for Ghoul. Just like that. Now, the way Tiger stood back on the edge to punish the signature that came out from Ghoul, that was super smart because we've seen Ghoul recover back to the stage with the signature multiple times. Uh, yeah, I mean, when he has that active input uh, with the scythe, uh, of course, we saw him just now throw out the, uh, the side signature for the icicles. But also, we we've seen him throw out the down signature because of that reversal property with the active input. Um, it's definitely something that he likes to try to throw out, maybe a little bit too much because Tiger started to kind of pick that up. So these players dead even. In winner's finals, Ghoul is up in the set 2-1. Delight Dare from Tiger. And the soft platform's giving Ghoul a different spot to recover back to. He has disarmed himself. Downlight recovery. Still able to pick up that scythe off the down toss. Oh, man. Tiger is just covering every option that Ghoul uses to get back to the platform. He just spent so much time in the air. Yeah, he still got the wall. Was still able to reset his jumps. Downlight recovery. Tiger. Is gonna take it to game number five, tied 2-2, two, two, a position that we did not expect Tiger to be in. Ghoul still sticking with the Mordex. Small Brawlhaven, Miami Dome, and Demon Island still left on the field. Crystal Temple, which started off looking like a great stage for Ghoul, was banned this time. Yeah, it definitely seemed like a good map for ghoul it's one of the small wall maps which is what we see in the small brawl haven and the demon island um and it's actually no surprise to see tiger go to this miami dome it's got the soft platforms which is something that he likes even though ghoul is able to utilize it seeing how he's kind of staying really high on it it's also something that tiger uh seems to prefer because it gives him some different options to recover to as well wow big gauntlet string to start off from ghoul though something rare we don't see too much from him it's been mostly like a the, the side lights into the recoveries for the knockouts that we've seen from his gauntlets. There is a weapon spawn on the field. Side light, gravity cancel, side light into the recovery, swap over to the side. He's gonna take two hits from Tiger, almost grabs the down signature. That down signature would have been devastating against Tiger. He is hurt right now. The ground pound is devastating. The weapon toss to guarantee it. Ghoul takes the first stock. Beautiful finish to that stock, taking that out uh, very early in terms of how much damage was on Tiger. So Tiger's many things went work. his way. Started to throw out the tatami map, but Ghoul was able to get there before the floorboard came out. Tiger needs this stock off of Ghoul. He has the edge guard opportunity. He's going to go for the weapon denial instead. Tiger's been able to even it up. Every time Ghoul had a serious lead, Tiger was able to even it up very quickly. Not connecting with the Nairs or Dares though. Ghoul still holding on to this first stock. Now Tiger's the one who's floating a lot more than he was previously. I think Tiger's a little bit scared. You saw him actually back up against Ghoul just a moment ago when Ghoul was making that forward approach. He is finally able to pick up the stock with that recovery, but Tiger's a little bit nervous about this position he's in against Ghoul. I mean, I would be too. It's game five, winner's finals. Neutral signature Ooh. connects. 
will suddenly wow. untouched on the second stock. The silent side air gonna send Tiger really far to the left. He's in the red. Ghoul's not even orange yet. Nice Tiger's trying to build up the damage. One neutral light at the time. This might be the opportunity for Tiger though. Like we were saying earlier, uh, Ghoul is gonna be a little bit reliant on signatures to finish off stocks, unless he can get those gimps and Tiger kind of taking advantage, able to extend the latter part of this second stock just because Ghoul can't find the read for the knockout. He has been doing pretty good. I think better than most gauntlet players uh, in terms of just the uh, rate in which he's actually finding the knockouts with the gauntlet sidelight mix-up options. He's hit a lot of recoveries for the knockout. I think he's maybe hit three and it was like out of four. Ooh! That's Tiger's going to take that stock. Ghoul coming in. Tiger is... Okay, he's going back to the sword. It almost looked like he was going to hold onto the bow for a minute. Oh, wow. <laughs> what an odd weapon toss to the back of Ghoul's head. Tiger needs to take this opportunity to extend this lead that he's got because it is such a small lead right now. The side signature will basically even it up. This can go either direction. We could see Tiger go into the loser's bracket uh, earlier than we're used to seeing. Even if Tiger loses this and then comes back and wins the tournament, this is still a very pivotal moment as Ghoul is the only other player, aside from Senpai Guy, to take a set off of Tiger in a power rank tournament. Ghoul showing gods can bleed right now as he is widening this lead over Tiger. Barely misses that recovery. Oh, that's going to be a punish. punish. That Nair just poking over the corner of the recovery, catches Tiger, the side oh, to it! Ghoul's going to the grand finals! Ghoul just took down Tiger. One of the few that can say they ever did that. Possibly one of the few for a very long time that can say they took down the Tiger. This is history for the Southeast Asian region. Like we were saying before,